You're listening to an Airwave Media Podcast. Hey, everybody. Just a reminder, this March, I am once again going to have my Arts Madness Tournament, a bracketed tournament of 64 different artists that you, the listeners, can vote on, and each week, half will be eliminated until we're down to just one ultimate Arts Madness champion. In the run-up to the tournament, I'm releasing 64 mini-episodes in 64 days, so be sure to follow Who Arted on your favorite podcast app, and tune in every day to get a little information about a whole lot of artists. I feel like Who Art Ed. Who Arted? Mr. Wood Art Ed me. Either way, it's ambiguous. It works on so many levels. I know. That's off to a great start. Welcome to Who Arted, where we explore visual arts in an audio medium. I'm your host, Kyle Wood, and today we're going to be looking at Angelica Acunili Crosby. Now, just a reminder, if you're listening on Amazon Music, Spotify, Good Pods, or any of those other platforms that support episode-specific cover art, you can see an image of the work right there as you're listening. Angelica Acunili Crosby was born in 1983 in... Enugu, Nigeria. Sincere apologies for any and all mispronunciations that are going to happen throughout this episode. Longtime listeners know pronunciation of any sort of words is not my forte, but as a non-native speaker, I am doing my best. Njidika's father was a surgeon. Her mother was a professor of pharmacology, so she grew up in a Pretty nice, stable, well-to-do family. When Angelica was 16 years old, her mother won the green card lottery, allowing Angelica to come to the U.S. and study. She spent a year studying and prepping for the SATs and then went back to Nigeria to perform a year of service. After completing that year of service, she came back to the U.S. She took her first painting classes at a community college in Philadelphia, and then she went on to Swarthmore. She was initially pre-med, but decided to pursue art. So after Swarthmore, she goes to the Pennsylvania Academy of Fine Art. Then she went on to her MFA at Yale. A lot of her work focuses on straddling different worlds and her connections to Nigeria and the U.S., I feel like in some ways her story is quite unique to her, and yet at the same time, there's a lot that feels relatable. I mean, most of us have not been transplanted, winning the green card lottery and moving halfway around the world, but many people do have that experience of sort of having one foot in one place and another foot in another world. A lot of people have had experiences of being uprooted in some fashion, and maybe it's moving you know, across the country or across town, uh, but a lot of people have that experience of moving and leaving behind some family and friends and having to forge new relationships and, and get your identity in a new place. And that's a lot of what she brings to her painting. She uses painting with some collage methods, like the integration of fabric and particularly transfers. These methods not only integrate patterns and textures, but they also enrich the work with the connection to pop culture and other icons embedded as details to be discovered within her work. I think the most interesting thing that really resonated with me as I was researching and looking at her work, um, you know, she talked about how she uses transfers because in the process of a transfer, an image is altered. It's faded. Details are lost. Colors can change. And in some ways, that feels like the perfect representation of memories. And it's fitting for work that's about her experience of being a part of different cultures, and the memories that she carries with her. In the full episode that my friend Janet Taylor recorded with me um, you know, two years ago, we talked about Angelica Acunili's uh, diptych, a two-paneled piece called Predecessors from 2013. And that was an acrylic painting on canvas with transfers and colored pencils and charcoal on paper, two panels each seven feet by seven feet. 
In this diptych, we see Angelica Acunili Crosby is looking at stuff from sort of her memories of her grandmother and the summers that she spent with her in a village in Nigeria. And we see the tabletop photos arranged the way they were at her grandmother's house. And she talks about how for this piece, she was looking at and thinking about how the generations have changed. She said that her parents' generation left the village seeking the city and dreaming of that cosmopolitan life, and that her generation sort of was straddling Nigeria and someplace else, moving on. And she talks about having some of those older traditional elements from from uh, previous generations, but also the more modern and international aesthetics, you know, the Ikea futon and chairs that were in her apartment in the U.S. And all of that coming together in this interesting diptych. And I think it's not a coincidence that the figure seated within the diptych is kind of looking back at the composition, the still life, the table with all the photographs and everything like that. And um, Angelica says that as she goes back to Nigeria, she's always picking up photographs, family events, printing stuff from from Facebook and, and other sources where she can get these images that tap into her home and her memories of Nigeria, where she spent the first 16 years of her life and where she still has family and friends and brings that connection to her work quite literally through the process of adding those transfers from photographs onto the canvas. And of course, if you want to learn more, I'm going to link the full episode on Angelica Akunyili Crosby in the show notes. This concludes this week's episode of Who Arted, part of the Airwave Media Podcast Network. If you found this tolerable, please leave a rating or review on your favorite podcast app. You can find images of the work being discussed this week and every week on social media at Who Arted Podcast on Twitter, Instagram, and TikTok. And of course, on the website, whoartedpodcast.com. Podcast done.